Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to do a demonstration video. I've done a few before, but I'm doing another one. Of my Take It pocket stove. Now these are from the 40s or 50s and 50s. And these are pretty hard to find. And these were made in the United States. And it's a pretty small form factor. And I have the original box and the instruction leaflet. It's pretty tough to find these. And uh, these stoves burn uh, Coleman fuel or camp fuel. They don't, you can burn gasoline in them, but it's going to make it pretty dirty. And they won't burn alcohol or kerosene, stuff like that, or diesel. So it's pretty neat how it all fits in one package. And it's pretty well made. It's pretty tough and strong and everything. So. So to open it up, you just take the two halves. Let's take this part out. Here's your tank right here. That's made of brass. And here's your fill cap. There's a gasket on there. And there's a little wire there. That's pretty. You prick the jet. And I'll show you that in a sec. So you want to make sure the cap is tight. Pop that cork out. This is your burner right here. There's a tiny pinhole right there. And that's what you use that wire for to pierce that hole. Now originally these came with a, a metal insert with a rubber ring on the outside that you would fit in here. And chances are if you find, if you have one, it's going to be cracked and dried out anyway, so it's not going to work very well. So I found a number three uh, wine cork works really well. Also, right here, this gasket usually is dried and cracked too, so I just made a little gasket for it and inserted a new wire into it, which is pretty simple. So when you start it up, you want to make sure your cap is on tight and you have you have your fuel inside. And if it's been dried out, has been used for a long time, you want to let it sit for a while to get there's a wick in there. You want to get that saturated. So to set it up. I haven't used, I'm trying to remember now how to do this it's a bit. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So you lay that piece down, and the two parts of your case go like that. This top ring. Fits over top like that, so make sure it's secure, like that. Now some of these, these stoves you have a windscreen and mine is missing one and it's not something I could make so I just, I find you don't really need it inside but these are really not that good outside anyway so it doesn't make a huge difference and I only use it inside. So to light the stove, you take some, you can hold your hands on the tank and a few drops will come out. Also you can take a straw and just siphon up a little bit of coma fuel on, on here. But coma fuel or gas would make that pretty sooty. So what I just have a little bottle here with some denatured alcohol in it. So I'll take a few drops in this little indentation here. I'll usually fill that up. And if a bit spills over the side, it's not a big deal. And you just light it up. See now they're starting to prime itself in that little jet. And just waiting for that alcohol to burn off. So when that burn off burns off you get a nice blue flame coming straight up and from the side. You just take the stove, carefully lay it in a little slot there for it. So I'm just gonna put on some water here to go up. And just this, uh, 
950 mil titanium canteen cup. And I forgot to mention, some of these stoves have a little metal diffuser plate, like a heat diffuser that goes on top. It spreads out the flame a bit more. Uh, mine doesn't have that. So we'll just set it on like that. I'm going to try to get the camera in now for a better view. burning away there, heating up the water, and uh, it's not a really fast, powerful stove. I mean, it looks like it, we've got this little jet engine type pour, but it's pretty, uh, it's not a huge flame, so it doesn't, it's not as fast as like a Coleman white gas stove or it's really cool and it's nice just to sit back and watch it. Like I said, these are pretty pretty rare stoves here. They do pop up every now and again on eBay for sale, but they usually the seller usually wants a lot of money. And you don't know if it's going to work. And often there's missing parts. But like I mentioned before, this fork part, the stopper part, the fork is a better choice anyway for the uh, plug that jet, jet opening. But the original one also acts as a funnel and the fuel up. Not a huge fuel, you just get a little funnel for the fuel. Because you pump mine with a little plastic bottle. So I'm just going to make some, use this water for hot chocolate. Check to see how the water is doing. This water was cold when I put it on there. Said the refrigerator, so it didn't take a bit longer. But if you have patience, it will, it will do the job. You could also put, obviously, now you can't control the flame at all. You can't control the heat, it's just on full bore all the time. But you could probably. Uh, Put a little frying pan on there and just whatever you're cooking, you have to turn it over pretty frequently, but it will do the job. I haven't used it like that yet. I don't see why not. And uh, I don't, I'm not sure how much fuel it holds, but probably I'm guessing like maybe like 100, 150 milliliters, something like that. Pretty small amount. You don't want to fill it up all the way either. As we're waiting for that to blow now, just read a little bit of the manual. These are made in Michigan, I believe, Traverse, Traverse City. Carry it in your pocket or in your automobile glove box. Maintains pressurized blue flame heat without priming, pumping, or other tension. It's safe. Burner if you take it. So it's completely safe. It is made of solid brass, silver braced with an indestructible unit. There is no pump, no generator, no valve, no moving parts. Pressure is always at a safe level. The burner will not overheat. That's 
pretty much the same thing here. Instructions are on how to, how to use it. Now, in the instructions, they say gasoline. And so you can use your temperature of your hand to cause the dropper to a fuel to appear at the burner opening. And we'll just show you how to pack it down afterwards. So like it is pretty, it is slow, but it is really neat as well. And, uh, as soon as that boils now, I'm going to show how to, how to extinguish it. It's pretty easy. Let's look at it from the side. <coughs> and I don't know how well the camera is picking up the mic is picking up the sound but it's, it sounds like a miniature jet engine we're getting really close now to the ball and a lot of factors now depends on how fast my ball, what like temperature of water is and anything. Whether or not you have the lid on there. The water was really cold. I do have a lid on there. I'm guessing eight, nine minutes is my guess. I'm not really keeping track of it here, but that's why I was cooking fast, somewhere around there. So. That's almost boiling now, so I'm just going to call that good because I don't want to, I'm just going to wait for the cool off anyway, so I'm going to some of this up. Pretty much all, almost at a boil anyway. So to, uh, to extinguish this stove, all you do is take this Take the tank out, and you just blow it out. And as soon as you blow it out, you want to release the uh, filler cap to relieve the pressure. And I'll just leave that out and set it aside, and wait for it to cool in completely, and just put the cap back on, tighten it, put the cork in, and pack it all back in the case. That's pretty much it. So yeah, it's a super, super cool stove. If you can find one of these at a good price, definitely go ahead and buy it. It's definitely an attention grabber for sure. Anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.